You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 61, The Millennials Meet the Dental Guys. Millennials have been called the me generation. It has been said they need immediate gratification and don't want to work. In this episode, recorded live at the Voices of Dentistry conference in 2018, we interviewed Sully Sullivan and Dr. Pei Men Rossi, Dr. Pei Ray as we know him, from the Millennial Dentist Podcast and asked them if these rumors are true. Does age or generation really mean anything when it comes to good dentistry? We challenge these guys to explain what motivates new dentists and to help us understand how dental education is changing in the new generation. Some of their answers may surprise you. They sure did surprise us. You won't want to miss this episode of The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call one 800 472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Well, welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. I'm John, The Dental Guy. John, it's been a great day today. I know you did some implant dentistry. I've done some regular old general dentistry today. We've yep. both been working on a Friday, and we're here together. We don't get together like this to record very often, but you just treated me to some really good mm. Mexican pl- food here right in your hometown. Yeah. And, you know, there's always one of these places that you just have to find. Yeah. And they serve some of the best, like, Mexican foods fresh. I mean, the lady brings out the fresh guac. She was like, we made that fresh. And yeah. you could tell because it wasn't moldy or anything like yeah, that. it was legit. But, John, I tried beef tongue Taco tonight. Lengua. <laughs> yeah. So good. It was amazing. It he was just, really he good. just tells the waitress, he says, what should I get? What kind of tacos? I'm not she's afraid. Got, she's got eight types of tacos or so. <laughs> and he goes, I don't really know what I want, but I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid. And the waitress says, beef tongue. She says, it was the first meat I ever ate when I was little. It was That's the right. only thing I would eat. And I'm like. And her mom's. And her mom's yeah, feeding her beef tongue. Beef tongue. And at, she's like crying about it. Yeah. I mean, so. Like, it's crazy. So Wes went for it. She and likes it. And I liked it. I so mean, what, what did it taste like? To me, it's like real lean, like beef. I mean, it's not anything that bad. I mean, it has no yeah. gamey taste or anything like that. I think you kind of get past that. But you yeah. know me, man. I'll eat anything. I, well, and so I told my wife, you know, we, we, we got home. <laughs> And I told my wife, you know, the first thing I'm like, well, we went to we went to this place, and 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 Wes had beef beef tongue. Beef tongue. She's That's like, awesome. and my wife is a vegetarian. She's like, ah, right. ah. <laughs> so, so you it was very successful. I, I liked it. You definitely grossed out my wife. I liked so that it. Was but good. We, you know, here we had a great time with the millennial dentist at the Voices of Dentistry. Yeah. And uh, I know Dr. Uh, Sully Sullivan. Uh, he and I m- kind of caught up um, at one of Tehran Agarwal's courses in Raleigh, and um, we kind of we kind of hit it off. And I said, Sully, I said, let's get together and record a podcast. One, I think there were some things that we had in common about dentists being cheap and cheaping out yeah. on materials and, and things like and that. And we like too that we like the Millennial Dentist Podcast a lot because. Yep. Um, because they're very honest about yep. what's going on. They're trying to figure it out for they people. They are. They are. Yeah. And we really respect that because, um, you know, in uh, in today's world, I think that uh, millennials do get kind of a bad rap. And uh, and that's one of the things that we went mm. into in this interview was, you know, is it is it true, you know, or, or is it just uh, made up that all these problems? And we really like what they do with the podcast because they are really trying to encourage young dentists to do things right, right. and uh, to go and learn. And uh, But they're also honest about their struggles with they some are. of the things that they're struggling with. So I think you guys will get a lot out of this episode if you're... It's good, and I think there was some times in the episode where uh, Sully kind of felt like he was thinking, like if you watch this on YouTube, yeah. we have a YouTube channel that has these uh, these episodes available for you to watch and, and listen to as well as uh, iTunes. But if you watch his body language yeah. he begins to process some things at one point i kind of like hey what's going on there 
You know, what are you thinking? And we, we, I think there were some good challenges brought up, and I, and, and I, I can't wait to have him back on the show again. Yeah. Um, we hit it off really well, and Dr. Payray there, he's doing some great things, yeah, too. Yeah, he's doing – I'm impressed with that guy. He had some good he's research knowledge. He's a lot knowledge. of education, and yeah, he wants to know. He you does. Know? He, he wants was, to know. He was, he was right up to the challenge, and we were asking about – we are talking about some research, and he – you know, he was quoting some stuff. He's seen some people, and, you know, we got it. That means a lot to us. Yep, it so, does. So let's get right into it, yeah. John. Uh, this episode was great. We recorded the Voices of Dentistry, so enjoy. Yeah. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. And we are coming to you live from the Voices of Dentistry Conference 2018 in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. And before we get into this next part of the show... I want to go ahead and tell you about a product that has really made a difference in both of our practices. We, we actually use the products that we talk about, so that's kind of cool. It's a product by Kettenbach called Silgenet. It is an alginate alternative. So if you're taking a lot of alginates in your practice and you hate them, I don't know many assistants that like them. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, 430, I think well, somebody was telling us the other day, you know, what's the thing that strikes fear in every assistant is it's 430 and you want them to take an alginate. Because and we got to you know, make an anterior discluding device on this patient's right, stat. Right. So they're going to have to stay, pour it up, da 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 da. Silzenet is something we can use as, that can be poured up later, can be poured up by the laboratory. It's very accurate, using for uh, opposing models for splints. And uh, it also, you can get it in a mixing machine such as a Penamix. It is compatible with that. And a, a lot of times the thing people ask is, you know, well, how expensive is it? It's a lot less expensive than you would think. And I think when you factor in the time... It's like a dollar in impression. Yeah, I think you factor in the time for your assistant, pouring it up. It's worth checking it out. So just go to uh, Kettenbach's <laughs> website, or you can contact Eric Cortez at 1-877-532-1121. Excuse me, let me say that again. 1-877-532-2123 or e.cortez, C-O-R-T-E-S, at KettenbachUSA.com. Kettenbach, buy smart, buy direct. Amazing. John. Um, last year, this guy rolled in, and T-Bone wanted to borrow our equipment. And yeah. I remember T-Bone, you know, T-Bone was on our show like crazy. I wish he was here just today. Um, there was rumors that he may make it here tonight. That's what I've I don't heard. Know. I've heard that, which is great because whenever T-Bone and, and this guy, Sully Sullivan, were going at it pretty hard. <clears throat> and, um, and congratulations on the podcast. Thanks, man. Uh, the Millennial Dentist. Introduce yourself and, and your cohort over here and yeah. tell us who you are and what the Millennial Dentist is all about. Gosh, you know, thanks for having us on. We're, we look up to y'all a lot. Y'all are, y'all are killing it. Um, <clears throat> so first off, thank well, you for that. The, thank you. The, the big thing is, you know, I, I got I got kind of sick and tired. I, you know, we're all in these Facebook groups, and I got sick and tired of a bunch of the bull crap um, about millennials. And I was like, I'm a millennial. I'm a proud to be a millennial, and I want— a, I'm not. I just turned 40. I want our generation— <laughs> <laughs> to be um, to be a generation that only does great things for dentistry, that we we carry the torch and move and move dentistry in the right direction. So, um, so I got this crazy idea, that, like like y'all, I was like let's start a podcast. So, um, when when I was in the early stages of it, I, I realized that I wanted some other people to help me out, and one of those was Payman, uh, because I wanted to find other millennials who do who I thought were How did doing, you say his name? doing things big. How did you say his name? Because I want to get it right. Paymon. That's how you say Paymon. it. Paymon. 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 They're calling me Pay Ray. Pay Ray. That's Dr. Pay Ray, baby. That's how I've known Dr. Pay Ray. Okay. Pay Ray. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so, like, so I called Payman up, like, hey, let's uh, let's do this. And, and, and you were you were kind of on board. Kinda? I was so fascinated by by the energy and the hustle because I was a year ahead of Soli in uh, University of Tennessee. We had each other at Tennessee, yeah. And we didn't really get to know each other much as... Actually, when I graduated, we've been hanging out with the podcast. I know him so much, and I keep we, we're hanging out a lot more. But when he started with the idea, and he, what he said that he wants to do that, and the most the major thing that what it impacted me or wanted me look like, to be part of it was how he wanted to help and give back. It's good, and that was something that was so selfless from him. And I was like, man, I want, I love to you be want a to do part that of too, it. right? Right, I'd love to be a do and being doing it. And and he's actually set up the bar high to where we have. I have to keep keep <clears throat> showing up to all these production. Stuff. Like, bring yeah. your, gotta bring your game, amazing. Huh? I'm 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 very blessed and lucky to have him as a friend and. A, I look up to him and everything that he's done. It's good. So far. It's pretty awesome. It's good. So, so then last year I'm sitting there and I have to hear y'all talking crap about all the millennials, and so I was like, hey, we gotta we gotta talk about this because 
y'all, um, the dental guys, are you're you're a part of this group that's supporting the uh, some of the negativity. I was like, what's that all about? We're supporting negativity of the of us. Yes, t- t- giving us some heat. So how's well, that? Wait, 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 just a second it. here. Wait, wait, before wait. Before we even get started with this, before because I I know we want to get into that part of the show. Yeah. Okay. But and and I appreciate that. But a few weeks ago, I saw a sponsor, <laughs> a sponsor. <laughs> Facebook ad come across my feed from the Millennial Dentist. Uh oh! And it was this question of uh, showing a sagittal root uh, cut cross section, and you it said, "Hey, you lost I, me at sagittal." Said if you could respond about what about predictability in this case, then we'd give you a prize. Well, you know the dental guys are all about the clinical. So just in my off time today, uh oh, payment. This I went ahead and you. answered it for you. <laughs> Yeah. And talks about we class a, one, yes. class two, yes. class three, and yeah. class four. We have a little, including and references. Oh, my gosh. A, a, This is a, fantastic. A reference even Joseph Kahn, who did yeah. the study on this. Yeah. A lot of uh, uh, sagittal root uh, <laughs> cross sections. And it talks about the percentage. We'll not go into it. Yeah. But I want to just, just see. Just so you guys can kind of see yeah. this. You know, we Y'all have, have a, done your research. We have a one-page Are you talking about the uh, sagittal root, the treatment planning, what we were thinking, or what was asking a question about? What would you, if you were to this place is, an implant, right. where would you put it, A, B, or C? Exactly. That, that's Bingo. right. Okay. Exactly. Right. So here's your answer. And, yeah. And no one responded. I no one see responded. Any. What and, the heck, Pam? Well, so no, this is what I did. Let's see. So it goes back to when I first, everybody asked me questions like, hey, what, what do you place your implants for immediates, right? So I'm thinking about, okay, tomorrow or next week I'm doing a case and I'm planning it. And I'm like, well, let me find out what other people think. Right. So what I do, I'm like, okay, well, let me just do a screenshot of these ABC type of questionnaire. And I knew Tarnow's method. I know Palomalo's method. And I know IDR and like all these other people that would say C or B or A. So then I'm like, well, let me just post it on Instagram. So because I, I have, that's my main platform, yeah, I Instagram. That. And I did get a good more than 50, 60 responses on Instagram. Okay. Then I'm like, okay. okay, well, let me get on Facebook. And I just got on Facebook. I don't. I don't. I did not promote it to be a sponsored. It's ad. sponsored. Yeah. No, yeah. It would say. It said. Do you want no, we to did, sponsor? We did. We it, did. It did. You did it. Did, it? did you do it? Did it? Yeah, Why did you do it? But it also <laughs> said that you would get no. something. You would get something. Where's that's the prize? Right. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. That's really what it all comes down to. We just want the prize. We have millennials in his t-shirts. We're gonna get millennials in t-shirts. So no, tell me. I'd love to read it, but can we go over this? No. Wait. This is wait. Wait, well, we could go. Okay, you want to go over that? Yeah, okay, let's talk about let's it. Let's talk about that. Let's okay. talk about if it, it all comes down to really the one study that Joseph Kahn did about sure. he classified where the most common places where the bone was uh-huh. and where the root was. You know, when he did a bunch of CTs sure. on centrals mm-hmm. and found the percentages and he classified them, you know, class one through four. Right. And so basically this comes down to where's the most com- what's the most common? And the most common, in 81% of it, was where the entire length of the root uh-huh. contacts the facial plate. So the root is actually in contact with the facial plate. So your stability of your implant comes from the palatal bone only. Sure. And you have a large gap on the facial. So that's, that's your immediate case that can work really well. But you're going to have some situations where you're going to have the root centered, uh-huh. right? Which that can be your apical stability is uh-huh. where you're getting your stability from. And then now your placement becomes critical. And then they got into class three and class four, which is you know either you have no bone around the tooth, no sure. bone on either side, or very little bone, or you've got the link, the bone, the root is on the palatal. And palatal. I think a lot of people think that the root, oh, we'll do a lot of immediates, the root's gonna be palatal, and, and usually it's only 0.7% of the time. Wow. But if it is palatal, you gotta watch because you can perforate out the yeah, face. Because so a lot of those that, cases I'm, I'm have... still waiting for is it A, B, or C that you guys after coming up with the research, what would you say A, B, or C based on that question? Oh. What would you say that would line up with your research? Like what do you mean? Like uh, A, B, or actual, C based on Joseph Kahn's picture that research. he played that he posted. A, B, um, or C because there do you have it still pulled up? Because there are three different positions based on this research is actually one of them that is gonna go with what you guys say. Right, and we just, ha- oh, yeah, we don't have it pulled up. You have it. Just pull it up because yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's good because it, we, that's, and that's what we would use, I guess, to answer that would be well, his study found that sort of certain percentages, but is it right on the front? Is it right on right the front page? We need some live recording. We're looking. Today. You gotta scroll through. We're it. looking. 
what we're trying to find is this actual graphic. Can you go to, uh, I think, photos, maybe. In photos? If you're, if, you're, uh, if you're listening along with us and you want to go to their Facebook there page, right there. they've yeah, got right it there. in their photos. So which one would you, because I'm okay, very interested. So the, the best placement in this, because this is the most common one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, is, is the B. Right. Okay, because that leaves you... Leaves you a gap on the facial. The gap right. on the facial. Now, what I thought when I saw this is I said, well, his implant's a little bit... Too, li- too, too palatal. Too, too, well, not necessarily too palatal, but it's too large. The implant's too large. So it downsized the implant, increased the length so that you made sure that you got apical stability there. And leave with, the gap. And then leave the gap. And then mm-hmm. and, and place an immediate provisional or a customized, or ceiling, customized ceiling above, above. then for graph mm-hmm. containment. Right. So that's the most common. Sure. Um, it's it's the tougher call is the other ones. Yeah. And so right. in one of those, that's the, the really the problem is is class four. Right. right. That's where there's no, it's, it's centered right in the ridge, mm-hmm. and there's no buckle or palatal bone, yep. and that's a that's a red flag. Because if your implant goes right down people, the center, you're not going to have bone on either side. are taking teeth out without doing a cone bone? A lot. A Just lot. More than you'd think. I mean, yeah. More, than, more the, than you think. More than right. 80% and, of people, And so I'd this say. is a cone beam study. So what this study tells you, <laughs> we better be doing CTs on every immediate extraction, immediate placement oh, in the anterior. Without knowing where the facial plate is. Because after this came up, it, it brought a lot of conversation, and that's, that's what I love about this, because I learned more from that post from a lot of the prosthodontists that are trained by Joseph Kahn at Loma Linda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have friends that are being practicing with him. It's awesome. And they told me, okay, well, if he's I awesome. were you, and he's an amazing man. Sashimi. Well, Sashimi, right. yes. Right. It's well, he's a great guy. <laughs> he's a great speaker. Um, most of the ones that are actually trained by him told me the B is the correct answer. However they would put it a little bit deeper than what I have yeah. on that Yeah, picture. well, and that's with respect to tissue. Right, right. And wherever the tissue is. So right. you really, some of that you don't know until... But I'm very impressed by your research and everything. This hey is man, amazing. Hey, man, we're all about it. This is what we're about on the dental guys, man, they're man, serious about Okay, it. so let's talk about this. Is I'm, this I'm still... I want to learn about them. <laughs> Are we uh, transagital <laughs> or sagittal view? I'm confused. <laughs> sagittal. This someone help me. Someone bring me up So let's talk about you guys. That's the side profile view. That's what I call it. It's a side profile view. I talk in patient space. <laughs> Let's talk about them. Y'all, I bet I'd y'all love to know because you guys are also Gosh. from Tennessee, yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, which is amazing. Knoxville, right? Knoxville, Knoxville, did Nashville. Did a residency at UT Medical Center. UT Medical, okay. Yeah. John did his training in Connecticut. Connecticut. I did my training at West Virginia first, mm-hmm. and then to Knoxville and residency there. Yeah. So how good. did you guys start with the podcast? Oh my goodness, that's oh, a long man. story. But basically, we met overseas at an implant meeting. No mm-hmm. way. Yes, yeah, we had never and we met were only other. an hour apart, and I was supposed to meet up with this dental guy because my oral surgeon was going to, and and I'm thinking, man, you know how dentists are. They're weird. Yeah. And so we, we met, we met on the disaster. street, dude, at a train <laughs> station, and we just hit it off. That's hysterical. And so now, my, look, my wives are here at the Voices of Dentistry, and guess <clears> what? They hit it off. Yeah, they're at hanging. That's At fun. that meeting That's in Sweden fun. as well. That's awesome. And they're out. You know, spending our money, which is what they should be doing, yep. <laughs> and um, and but we hit it off, man, and that's how we met. And then from there, we had this ongoing conversation, you know, texting, sure. sending pictures back and forth, and and we were just on a plane, and we were like, dude, let's record this. Yeah, let's just record what we're and already two saying. Two and a half years ago, we started our podcast. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. We and now re- you have how many episodes? We have fifty nine. We release every other week. Every other week. Yeah, okay. on Tuesdays at eight o'clock. Uh, nice. Typically, we do we do YouTube. As well, so we record, and that's what the video is for. Video and the video cool is cool. Uh, this this brought to you by Kentenbach is the live stream, and we're super pumped to be able to do that because this is kind of the first time we did sure. this at yeah, a show live. like that. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so it's been great, man. It's been awesome, and we're that's clinical so based. Our show is. That's what I hear. I that's what I love about. Look, you guys are going to release this on your show, right? Yes, 100%. we are, yeah. and that's what I love about because I have a lot of um, I have like shadow some people that follow my Facebook and Instagram, and they come and shadow, and a lot of them have mentioned you guys and they're like oh, really? they're one of their best podcasts that's that they listen to. Cool. So, well, that's, so that's how I that's got awesome. connected because some of the people are like I love their podcast because well, we they actually your listeners. sit yeah. down and you guys go over research and yeah. literature which that means everything right. yeah, by man. the we way we haven't covered that in a show that Joseph Kahn study but I do I pulled up a PDF that was part sure. of my lecture I saw that oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah nice it's part of my lecture so what made you guys <laughs> think about okay so now tell me what made you guys think about this whole like bringing up literature. Why, come, why, why go into a clinical? Well, yeah, because that wasn't... Well, we looked at it as there's two things when we... Initially, that was just what we did ourselves. Like, we would, you know, we Wes, would, Wes would show me a case, and I would be like, hey, I read this article. 
Right. Uh, here's how I would maybe do this case. And then if I would do the same, Wes would, you know, so we kind of call each other out well, and say, hey, I read this part, I read this paper, you know, what about this? And we were going to meetings and seeing, and you know, we're trying to find the, the high level researchers and go listen sure. to them and talk. But we saw that there was not really a show doing that. So as it's, this thing has evolved, we found that, you know, there's a lot of business podcasts, which is great. Sure. But there's not really a lot of, of clinical podcasts. Sure. And, you know, there's this change happening, we feel like, and, and some of this is generational, between where it used to be like print media and you would mm -hmm. see like, you know, Gordon Christensen yes. and... Compendium. Compendium, reality, yeah. a lot of these like product evaluation. I mean, have you ever tips. read Reality, Sully? No. Yeah. And no. it's one of the greatest it's great. resources. But it's, but it's going away. But it's going no, it's away. Just, and that's just the, I mean, the, yeah. no one's the, yeah. the reality. Yeah. That's the reality yeah. of it. <laughs> so we were you like, like that? So see we, what it did there? Yeah, so we started, at, as we started getting into more clinical discussions on the show, we were like, we don't know who will actually listen to this. It's all like geeky. And we had like this tremendous response where people sure. are like, Wow, so I can actually l find out why, why I'm, I'm doing, doing this. something instead of just why? like I or, went to a course and some guy said this is what I do, you know? You know, where people are looking for products or how to do something or which ones they want to use. I mean, they, yep. they, don't, they don't know what, uh, you know, what yep. impression material to use. I mean, that's the reality for a lot of people. Yep. So what do you guys do now other than the, pra uh, the podcast? Now, you guys both practice in dentists in Knoxville. Yeah, so I'll start with me and then, John, you can tell. So I, I, I have a private practice. Uh, it's primarily fee-for-service. Okay. And um, and that's in just outside of Knoxville there. And uh, I opened it up from scratch in 2004. Nice. Started with zero patients. Wow. And built it up from there. That's awesome. And um, and basically, you know, practice there three or four days a week. Three and, four days. Uh, and then do do it all, man. So. So you do everything. I do it. I do pretty much everything. There's things that I do refer, uh, primarily like retreats. Uh -huh. Most of the time, those are coming out. And implants are going in. Right. Um, I don't. I don't take out thirds. Um, I don't. I do most of my pediatric ortho and adult ortho goes to an orthodontist. Okay. Uh, with respect to airway, I'm gonna start saying that. Oh yeah. You know? Airway. And uh, the. You've uh, been roused too. I oh, see. Oh, I'm That's roused. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've been roused. <laughs> so, the um, <clears throat> the thing, I guess, really then from there, also teach at UT Medical Center. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm an attending there. Great. I call a few days a month. I mean, just to support the sure. residents. Then they come out and spend some time quarterly. But you do like teaching as well. Yeah, and that's really where John and I hit it off because I would always try to bring literature to my sure. lectures for the for the you know budding dentist that's in residency because mm -hmm. we had to do journal club right. when we were residents, and that was every Tuesday night. We're going out to dinner, and there's going to be seven journals, seven journal articles passed wow. around. Passed around. And so that's kind of how, one, I gained a lot of weight, and number two, <laughs> how I really started to learn Appreciate how to evaluate is. good research. Good because research. here's the question at the end of every article you should ask ourselves. Yes. Is, one, this a valid study? Okay, is it, is it valid? And can what is the take-home pearl or message here? What can we immediately apply to what we're doing, or what can we do to change what we're doing? How does it apply? Because it's... Re, you know, science is only good today. Tomorrow it's probably going to be proven wrong. Yeah. And so you can't throw science out. And I think that's what sometimes we do as we're supposed to be scientists, as dentists, is we fail to critically think. And so that's kind of a soapbox of mine. But, or we rely yeah. on what was, what was previously been done that's outdated and right. not up to date right. with Right. What, and, John, I'll let on. you continue and kind of plug what we got going on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, in a smaller town. You know, Wes is near Knoxville, big, pretty good-sized sure. city, a mid-sized, big-sized city. And I'm in a small town of about 15,000, county of about maybe 50,000, 60,000 in eastern Tennessee. So a small town for sure. And uh, uh, have a, an associate there uh, as well. We work, you know, full-time uh, in private practice there. Um, and uh, do uh, some implant placement, but a lot of implant restoration. I've been placing implants for a couple of years now, although that's not my primary thing. I do much more restorative and doing more and more surgery uh, in a small town. That's always an interesting thing because there's a lot of need in a small town because people don't want to sure. travel. Where is that? So, Cobb County? Uh, Green County. Green so, County. Yeah, yeah. So it's near. It's actually right near there. Um, and uh, yeah, so as far as... Like, there's a lot do, of demand there. Yeah, for, for sure. dentistry, a for lot sure. of folks oh, yeah, that need. Man. We yeah. don't like for dental implants. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of need, yeah. a lot of unhealthy people, but a lot of need for dental implants. A lot of money. 
there, there can be. A lot be. of money. There can, there can be. be. <laughs> it's interesting. You wouldn't think. Like, I stopped judging farm ever money. since I stopped working yeah. in Except Tennessee. Money, baby. That's right. They, sell, yeah. they say, yeah, you know what? I'll, I need to go sell a couple cows yep. and I'll pay yeah. them. Yeah. They can get a smile. That's you true, never man. know. I always tell my yeah. page, tell people, like, receptionists, the guy walks in in overalls, he's a millionaire. Yeah, don't judge, you know? man. You don't can, judge. Because people are people will surprise you with their values, and it's a lot of it is relationship based. Of course, it in is. a small town, and so it's you know there's good and bad about small town dentistry, but there's a lot of good. I love it, and I love being in a small town and having relationships and having people that their families come for generations to this practice that I've I've been a part of for a while now. So uh, we also you know Wes mentioned teaching. Yes, we're also teaching together um, a course on. Uh, Implant, surgical placement, and restoration. Nice. That's something else that the dental guys have gotten involved with here in this last year. In fact, this this year is kind of our big, real kickoff toward um, toward teaching that. So that's been kind of a cool thing to get that's involved awesome. with. Take, taking kind of what we talk about in the show and, putting and what effect. we do, and actually, yeah, yes. training training people to do the restorative, do the surgery. Um, so that's kind of one thing that's that's uh, kind of big going on with us right now. Because that's a big point. Because. A lot of people, and I guess I'm, I'm one of those. When I was in dental school, when I look at research in dentistry, and I mean, I was a dental student, I'm like, no, I hate it. I don't, I don't want to spend time. And then the more I got out and I started going to these CEs, and I'm listening to all my mentors that I truly believe in. I, I mean, I worship their everything they say. What do they do? They're bringing out literature and and right. and, and well, papers. Well, it didn't apply from, to us back then. That was the reality. We're, right. We, we we weren't. But I guess he's trying that, to get through school at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but also I think there are some schools that do teach more literature-based oh, dentistry yeah, than sure. those are the kids that know, get like the A's on the boards. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. clinical boards. You know, the schools that do great on clinicals are the kids that don't. They sometimes don't have it. it's inverse. Sometimes there's not a balance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was where where I went. It was research was they wanted everybody to specialize and they really hit. You know, we were one of those schools that dissected whole body. We were with the medical students for two years. And I feel like UT years, was not one of, I mean, no. I didn't know. <laughs> I guess it's my fault because I was not really even interested. But you even if I was, either, yeah. I well, don't think we, don't our school that. was more clinical because that's why yeah. when I got out of school, I felt like surgery was a joke compared to now, let's sit down and read a paper and mm. analyze it. Like mm. oral surgery, what I'm trying to say, oral surgery department was so much more solid than some of the other departments, for example, research or even perio, mm. which I hated. Yeah. But now I love. Now you love. I love yeah. perio so much we just more. Thought it was scaling root plan, I felt like yep. scaling. Yeah, like they're going to um, their what is it called? Profi masters, like a uh, hygiene uh, graduate hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> and it is not the case. Yeah. Like they're doing so. Like if I really wanted to give out uh, an implant case, if I feel like I'm not gonna be the best, I'm gonna send it to a periodontist. There you go. Instead of an oral like surgeon, it. I'm sorry. But if I'm gonna do a badass grafting for a sinus or something crazy, I'm gonna send it to oral surgeon. Right. Because right. they're a lot better. So, uh, it, to me, I feel like dental school also has a lot to say. So with the next generation of dentists coming out, loving research or hating research, but at the end of the day, knowing that everything we do every day is based on what you guys are doing. Is research. It's knowing the, the why. It's knowing the why, not not just again going <clears throat> learn, doing it because somebody told you to do it. Yeah, you just can't. You can't guess. You can't just practice empirically. You've got to stick to something. So, are you guys working on any research right now, or are you involved? Actually, actually, yeah, we are. We're working on a. We're we're kind of in the early stages of a project on ISQ, okay. and uh, that's something we're going to be talking about tomorrow yeah. at, the, at the show. Is you know, there's a big controversy about insertional torque for implants sure. versus ISQ, and what's more important and so we're starting, and we're kind of early on, so we don't, I can't say much about it, but we're sure. talking about you know, that's, that's neat. some interesting studies about what is truly more important to predict uh, stability long term, and when yeah. can you load, and how does ISQ affect that, and, and looking at different implant designs, sure. and how does the, that Wait, affect so that ISQ. what ISQ is going to look like, depending on the thread designs and, and stuff like that. And if you're listening to this now, we're going to re-record that as an actual podcast. Right. So that, that show coming up, you'll stay tuned, is Insertional Torque Meaningless. Yeah, that's the title. That's Ooh, the title. Yeah. That's teaser important. alert. Yeah, I yeah, like teaser. it. Yeah. Because yeah. now there's a lot of companies with the, uh, I mean, with the yeah. Austail and the ISQ. Yeah, they were, they were I mean, they're coming out more and more you to where like. come and just check out what our. Yeah, our tomorrow no, morning, to. that's yeah. going to be love our, our discussion. Out, because it, cases and more data, I'd love to be a part of that. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Definitely. Love to, I mean, I love I love doing it because it's it's I love to be a part of something that is working up, you know, yeah. to come groundbreaking to a degree. Yeah. So let's talk about the reason why you're here. Yeah, you, you, you kind started of started going into that, that a little started, bit, and we cut you cut off deep real soon. Bam! He, he cut, cut it yeah. deep. Yeah, he did. quick. I didn't even <laughs> no, expect it. No, he didn't even say anything. No. Coming out of the yeah. gate. 
So, come on, bring it. Bring it. Look, I, at the end of the day, my thing was that I realized that um, we as millennials are getting a lot of, it's a lot, there's, it's a very polarizing topic, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a broad discussion. And what I feel like is happening is that we are getting a little bit branded by a smaller percentage of people um, that's making a lot of noise because of the way our, our world is set up now with social media. Um, everything's broadcasted, everything's seen. And so that there's a, a large group of, of um, well, we're getting branded by a small group of people who are maybe doing things a certain way. And my shift and take on it is, is and I get frustrated, I think, being a millennial who's driven and um, excited about our profession, that I want to, because here's the thing, at the end of the day, I don't think the, the four of us disagree on much when it comes to education and the way we should act and the way we should do things and moving sure forward. Well, well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> but, but the big thing that I feel like hurts us is that the conversation arrives on, well, what, they're doing this, they're doing that. It, it's all about, like, oh, well, where, where we are as a generation are lacking. Right. And a part of me is like, okay, well, first off, a lot of y'all that are saying this, or, or not, not y'all specifically, but I'm saying that the noise is coming from the generation that, one, raised us. So it's like, okay, well, let's, maybe you shouldn't have given us all participation trophies. Like, maybe that was a bad idea. And then the flip side of that is, why can't we, we look at, like, some of the positives and where we can work together to truly benefit, I think, um, our profession as a whole? Because I think we have a lot to offer, and um, that's what really moves the needle forward in a positive direction versus, um, I feel like, what, what's happening now. So what kind of negativity do you think that, because you and I talked about this briefly and I feel like me being the age I am. Because you're the tweener to I'm a degree. I'm the tweener, really. Yeah, I'm definitely right? the yeah. tweener. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm 40, John's 36. 36. Yeah. And I feel like that I can see both sides of this, this plate. And that's one of the reasons why we started a podcast. Sure. Because we knew people weren't going to see E. Now, we think at some and let, point. Well, hold on. Let's just stop right there. Okay. Okay, because I'm going to say that I think one of, if there is a Pull up Critic to that mic a little bit if, there. If there is a criticism that I think I maybe have generalized, and maybe I'm wrong, and I want you guys to tell me if I'm wrong, it's that I see a lack of participation in quality CE from younger dentists. There's less people going to meetings that are younger. Sure. There's less people going to that want to spend money on quality CE. Um, now, there's good and bad about things like, say, online CE and sure. video 100%. and stuff like that. But it, do you think that that's a valid thing, or are we? Is there you know? And if so, is there a reason? Can I say Tell me about something that. after this. Can I say please this that what Soli is saying? Soli is understanding 100 percent of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What he's what he wants to do, and what we want to do with the podcast is we already know that we already know there's less parts, but we gotcha. are doing him, and just because we want to get other people excited. However. We don't want to, there are sometimes when you want to talk to your hygienist or when you want to t t tell them, hey, you want to move up, you want to do this. The, one of the ways that we found, me and Soli, that very effective is getting them excited by not telling them, you guys suck. By telling them, you guys are this generation. You guys are this negative. Because trust me, I could come up with more and more excuses for all these millennials out there that it bothers me and it bugs me. However... When I see a millennial, I'm not going to say that nigga. I'm going to bring it out and be like, let's do this. Are you signed up for this? But that's how sometimes some people are just, they're more driven if you don't point out some of these things. Because they, guess what? Their life, all their life, their parents did that. Hmm. And their parents are doing it to them. And they just, they don't have that confidence. They don't have that self-esteem anymore. So our approach is a little bit different. As Even though as much as we know, we go to all these CEs and we don't see any of these millennials out there. However, what are we going to say not them not being there? Let's get them excited. What are the things that we can get them excited about mm -hmm. are some things like these. Literature and, and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah. so here, and here's cool. the thing. So, so the flip side of this is... is um, you're 100% correct, but there's a couple things that I would point out. Okay. So I cannot, I can't agree with you more that I, I'm fearful of our generation accepting other options of education than being in person at CE. That's a big concern of mine because I, I think you're dead on. Because what we would all agree here is that sometimes the CE is that we're, that the biggest take home from a CE course is less about the education in the lecture and more about the education during lunch 
getting drinks, hanging out afterwards. Sure. Would you sure. agree with that? Oh, there's a lot of that. And yeah. so I think that that's the big part that we miss on that. Now, the second, the, the flip side of that is, is is access to information, right? So that's where our generation can ultimately, I think, climb a ladder and be um, do a lot more, a lot faster because we have access to information. So true. We can. Y'all have to realize too, though, that when you say quality education, there's a lot more unique, different places to get education now. Like Definitely. The, the reality is the dental meeting where something's being taught that was done along, you know, is not the way that it's doing now is totally different than payments hanging out with buddies who are, you know, doing stuff that is like five years ahead of us. True. And they're broadcasting all this stuff live. We're, we're seeing it happen in action. No, so that's a blessing and a curse, right? Because right. now we're, now we're, and, and for y'all specifically, it's a blessing and a curse because we, we're getting a, a little bit ahead of science and research, right? Right, and we're getting into a little bit of the realm of the unknown. But that, but with the, the the flip side of that is though, is that we're going to, we may make some more mistakes because of that. But we're also going to move quicker, I think, through things. And I think we have an opportunity to actually do a little bit more because we're we're a little bit um, we're, we're just running a little quicker, maybe not assessing the situation so much. Mm. Does that make sense? Do you follow me? Okay. Yep. And so and so we get there. <clears throat> Let me say this, because you said a lot there. And let's pare it down. I agree. I think that's okay. a, good, a better way to do it. Let's pare it down here. I get excited. I know. Uh-huh. And, I, and, I, and I get what you're saying. What we have to realize here is that there's two types of learning. Okay? Mm-hmm. There's reading and reflection, which is basically a lecture. Because you're reading, whether you're listening to it or sure. reading it, it's the same thing. Okay? You leave that meeting and you reflect on what you just heard and you process it. Okay? Now, for some types of things, that is good enough, okay? Sure. And there are people that are keen more to that than they are to other ways hands of learning. Hands-on. Right. Then there's hands-on. So, so now, let's give us an example. Let's give an example. Yeah, let's do that. As, like, what, what well, type like of we just talked about, okay, so Well, like we just talked about Joseph Kahn's study here. You know, like if, <clears throat> if Joseph Kahn gets up and, he's, and he basically uh-huh. goes through his study, yeah. explains it. And tells you where to cla- put your implant right, cause at. Because th- this is just data, man. Like, sure. you can't hands-on and data. show your you just sure. have cases, to go, hey, that type of thing. Yeah, or, like, for instance, data. a great thing is, is Spears' uh, seminars. Yeah. They're an all-day seminar yep. where you, I mean, you see amazing things. Mm-hmm. You see how to do these things, but there's no hands-on component mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. That's great. You are going to have what you called mingled education at that. That's yep. still reading listening and processing that's one way of learning Mm -hmm. but we guys look look here this is the kit difference is we're in a a profession that requires hands-on learning no matter what now that could be mentorship over your shoulder that could be well you're just really daggone amazing and you go back and get the reps in and you have the ability the focus and drive to do the reps like for instance i'll never forget the end adonis uh, Stephen Buchanan tell me, mm-hmm. mount up 30 teeth when you finish my course and go back and do the reps and do it just like we did. Okay? Why did he say that? Because he knows that it's hands-on. It's not it's just about the science. It's not just about the teaching and listening to that. So where I feel like that you're right is, one, you guys have an amazing ability. I grew up with a computer, my first computer in 1987. It was a 486 DX, 33 megahertz. It had a turbo button. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Had, you know, it's crazy. What I, I bet I was a geek. Okay? So I understand the medium. Okay? But at some point, watching and looking and listening, okay, is not enough for dentistry. Sure. For instance, we were at the Taj Mahal, and I love to tell this. John, you were there. You listened to the thing. How many years, John, did they apprenticeship the people that cut the stones for the Taj Mahal? before they were actually fully, it was like 20 years. Yeah. Now we know it takes 10 <clears throat> years to really become good at something and doing it, right. okay? Dentistry, whether you like it or not, is a labor, and you have to put the time and effort and the skill head sets in your hands, and your, your, it's sure. a, it ha- requires hands-on. So there is a balance. So the type of C that doesn't work and gets a bad rap from millennials Mm -hmm. is a meeting where you just go to it and you listen and you mingle because you really don't take back everything you need. Well, no, but, you but like, so, take way less. Than, well, but I'm going to say, though, is that and say, Wes, like I have a totally different perspective than Wes on that. And I'm not saying Wes is wrong, but I think that the problem that I that I have is that I hear something like they're like, well, I don't take anything home from that. So I'm not going. I'm like, dude, you know what? At some point. 
Joseph Kahn's freaking study, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, man, but you just need to sit down and freaking read it. I agree. And you just need to deal with that. But what's well, wrong? Like, so, but what's and, wrong and with that? And that, and that there's no other way <laughs> to like YouTube that. Like that's right. just something you have to read through because the data. It's a combination it's, of it's the like two he, things. Like Mark talked about earlier today, deep work. It's deep, deep work. work, man. Deep you work. have to sit down and process that information. And and you can't just like get that quickly and easily. And I think that that's the but thing. But why can I why can somebody, I identify that okay, what he that guy's done the that guy's done the work. Mm -hmm. That's where I need to place the implant, so I'm going to place the implant there. Well, that's cool, but you have to know why, though. And so, just saying, like, place the implant at B. It's called okay, critical like, that's thinking. Cool. Like, I, there's it's two ways of doing thinking it. Well, like, I, like either, that was advocate a little bit. Here. Yeah, either yeah. somebody says put it in position right. B, and you just do it. That's a You're mechanic. You're never going to know that's why a, not. That's a mechanic. Sure. No, I understand. But then, understand. if you want to be the engineer, you go, I know why I'm putting it in B. Right. And then if something goes wrong, I know when to take that implant out sure. and graft right. it or whatever. Technology and, and 3D and CBCT can only get us in trouble. Right. It's the experience of and why. And when we see pictures we of can cases, get out of or right. even when we do hands on, if we don't understand why, if we just say, well, this guy does it this way, so I'm going to do what he does. No. And, then you, and you don't understand. Okay. And the why only comes, I think, from. From diving into that deep stuff, so the answer, which which that's the harder. answer to it's John. Harder. John, the answer to what you're saying is is a pod is not a podcast or whatever. But the answer is is that the, is what we see really in podcasting today in dentistry. The ratio of clinical shows on a podcast to business shows, right? Because business is easier spoken and taught from a lecture with numbers and metrics and things sure. that you can quantify, mm -hmm. okay? And you can really quantify certain things. Right. Is it hard to quantify biology, Pei Ray? It's, it's, it's very it, difficult. It's very difficult. And so here's the thing is that why don't you see more clinical podcasts? I mean, what? why because, is it? And the reason why is because it's hard. It but, is hard. But that's the thing is I feel like there's not, a, there's not right now, and I'm not talking just younger dentists, okay? I, I, it's not just younger no, dentists. Yeah. I think dentistry in general has moved away from that from that like wanting to know thinking type thing. everything no, that you want to know and it's not younger it I mean there's so in true. general less people it's generally going to these things it's in, in general it, yeah, you guys opens, get hacked because you're the easy one to yeah get but it's not just the young guys at it's all it's true no and it is true but what I do want to tell you guys and what I there are so many young dentists or dental students out there that do want to listen to these liters they want to know why Oh, they we know that because some of our biggest downloads yeah. come oh, yeah. from educational institutions. From dental students. Right. From a dental lot of students. dental students. And they want to know why. And, and that's Millennials, what I might add. Yeah, yeah no, man. Okay. Absolutely. They're not even millennials now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They're not. That's yeah. right. Whatever the next one Generation is. Generation Z. Z or, or yeah. something. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you guys for what you have done. I, I think part of the problem is, too, though, is that the we also we're looking... We also teach this to us ourselves, right? Because we... we, uh, we that's a way of learning. Because, well, no, I'm, not, I'm saying we do it to ourselves in the fact that when we, we tell each other that when we graduate dental school that we've known, we know something, that we know a clinical knowledge, we have a mm -hmm. foundation. And what do we, what, what's the first thing that we, we all say that they don't teach us in dental school? The business side. Exactly. Right. So we do it to ourselves right there, right? So then we inherently say, okay, well, you've learned something, right. but you have known nothing about this. So go and learn about and this. I'm an Does that make sense? In your first several years, just diving into clinical education. Yeah, see, or this communication is, skills. This is well, well, I there's look some at basic what, things that I think uh, we need to be. Well, we have to talk about, about like what's the first lecture of the day today, and this is what bothers us. Okay, so like we don't even care to just throw it out there, dude. Like, yeah. this event. Okay. Yep. Look at this event right now. We are the only people here that will be talking on a stage about, about anything yep. clinical at all. You're right. And and. Look, you know, who, who, can you we all. had, we had the all, show, way. one of the major show sponsors on our on our thing. Okay, you all know who he is. He spoke this morning. Yeah, and he said it's refreshing to come over here and talk clinical because that's what I'm about. Yeah, and see, because I'm not saying the business it's stuff's important. bad. It's it's, no. it's essential. It's essential that you get a business education. But I think that there's two ways of thinking about this. One way is that you get proficient in business and you'll make money. The other way is you you go and you learn how to do excellent dentistry. And then the, you will make money. And right. I think you can't ignore the other thing. It, doesn't, no. it doesn't have to be one or the other either. No, I mean, they no, can go no. hand in hand. But, yeah. but I think, but well, I think it kind of does. It kind of does. I think does, in the though. shorthand, business yeah. will get you money in the short run. 
in the short run. But it if is. all your stuff sucks, yes. in we'll 10 years, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you're not going to be... Gonna, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why you then you have to go have, have, have more so long. Right? Okay. And then you just have to move let's, to another town. Okay, <laughs> let's make a recommendation right now Yes. Okay, on what the dental guys and the millennial dentists think that newer graduates within the first five years, mm-hmm. just, a, just a real simple, just what would you do from a standpoint? Would you go to meetings? And would or what type of education would you would Can you I recommend? go first? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. yeah. I'm gonna go first. So the first thing I would do right after dental school, understand that I need a lot of help. Now I need have needs. There's a lot of needs. All I have is a degree on a piece of paper that allows me to do what I do. You have However, a license. I have a license, but I do not know how am I gonna use this license to benefit me the best way that I'm capable of. So the best thing I would do, or one of the major things I would do, is to participate in meetings, in hands-on learning. However... So you're saying hands-on CE events. Be more specific, though. Right. Okay, so I would learn the foundation of dentistry. First thing I would learn, not to go and learn drop screws in titanium, not to do digital dentistry, not to know how to uh, print a guide. Facially generated treatment planning. Exactly. Courses like Spears and John Coyce and courses that teach you why. Right, and that's not expensive. I love this. I'm going to take a, a totally different approach to this. Right? Okay, so, cool. okay cool. so that's your one. I'm going to give you one and that's it. Okay. okay? John? Yeah. This yeah. is good. Yeah, so I would say that that's the direction that I would go is getting really good at your basics and treatment planning. I think it's like you could kind of pick one and the mm-hmm. other would be fine. Get really good at endo. Get really good at crown preps. Get really good at composites. Get really good at the basics that are everyday things. Nuts and bolts. You need to learn how to be excellent with your bonding, excellent with your endo. These are things that and are... And you want you to go to a combination hands-on even if you, Even if you're not... Even if you're Where are doing, you doing this, by the way? Well, though? I would say, you know, find out who's doing good endo treatment. You know, there's there's guys like Steve Buchanan as an, as an example. Yeah, very affordable, by You know, and they're, yeah, but they're if not... if you don't know the basics, why do you want to do learn endo? Like, if you don't understand the well, whole Well, because foundation. we're taught single-tooth dentistry in dental school. And That's I think true. you can get out and you can do single-tooth dentistry things. well. And I'm not saying you should do that forever. Yeah, because 30% of teeth that are crowned. Because sure. if the first out. thing you do is you go to facially right. generated treatment planning, dude, you're going to go in and start trying to tell, sell people on on full arch. And I'm not saying that's bad, but you don't even know how to do endo yet. Sure. So, like, you don't even know how to do crown preps yet. And so you need to make sure, I think, that you know how to do the so basics John says first. maximize the fundamentals. The, basics, the fundamentals. And then okay. quick, quickly follow by what you're saying. Right. That would be what I would and say. there's all kinds of places to get that. You start with some of these regional meetings like the Hinman. The sure. Yeah, Chicago, yeah. Midwinter. smaller meetings. You smaller can get good stuff. Smaller meetings cost you right. less. You don't have to fly so It's very to. inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. Yeah. Yes. And don't say yeah. it's not because it is. Yeah, so what do you think, what would man? you say? Gosh, quickly, quickly. I don't have quick time to do this. So the, <laughs> I, I take a little bit of a different approach because my reality is is that, in theory, I love what you two are saying. I don't disagree with you. The problem is, though, is that there's some aspect of survival when we graduate. Like, okay, when we graduate and we're trying to figure out what the heck we're going to do, how we're going to spend money, I mean, some of these courses are are expensive. I mean, you know, the one... But that's not an excuse anymore because we just told you they are, aren't. uh, There are some that aren't, right? But I'm saying that what my thing is, is I I want everyone to identify where am I weak at, okay? Okay. Because I got to survive first, right? So I have to be able to, to, to pay my loans, put food on the table, and move forward. So my big thing to ask people is, okay, when you graduate, is what are you weak at? And, w- and identify those things and go learn about those things. So in, in some essences, it's not that much different. I, well, maybe it's not. But, but if, 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 you're, if you know that clinically you struggle, because some people are going to be more talented clinically than others, okay, then maybe it is that you do more hands-on clinical stuff. My problem with that is, and maybe I'm the only one that feels this way, but me drilling on a type of dot, for two hours at a course is not doing that much for me. Like I'm going to learn more from redoing my work, from making mistakes, from doing it in real life, just because that's how I learn. Call that a, a bad way of thinking or a bad way of doing it, but I'm just telling you that's my reality. I feel like. So then I and for some people I realize that like they may be pretty good with their hands out of the gate, but they can't talk to patients. And if you can't talk to patient and can't identify with the patient to do this, then let me interrupt you a second. Okay. So. Is 25%, which is what we teach us in dental school, basically, and just a pure basic foundation of what crowns are. You may have done one or two crowns in dental school. You may have did, you know, some occlusals and maybe a class two composite if you were lucky. And, sure. You know, you've done a few of them. You've those. done 30 of them. You know, 30 of them. So 
what you're saying is, is that doing 30 is enough to feel like coming out of school that you're ready to go um, and not do any more training in composites. No, not at all. That's a, no, that's what you said. What I'm saying is, though, is that... Some people are better than others. Is what <clears throat> oh, 100%. Saying. Right, but does that still mean that the better person doesn't need training? There's gotta, of course not. So that's my problem. But I'm saying, but that's they may problem. be at a point, though, that, that they're that at this point in their early career that okay, their time so is devoted do better to doing something. How you money as a dentist? You turn a handpiece at 200,000 RPMs. If you're using air-driven, it's 400,000. But my point yeah. is we need to stop thinking like that. No, but that's how you make money as most dentists. Now, not the 5 percenters. Well, I understand, okay? but I think so that's a trying, transitional shift that we need to be talking about. That well, Maybe it shouldn't be that I have to drill on teeth. Teaching, okay? I understand. Teaching the masses. Okay, You're not going to change the ship in a big way, but you're going to tell, you're going to tell somebody like, okay, 95% of you are turning a handpiece every day. Well, I want I want to get back though to just what you said. Like, I'm not sure that I understand. You said, you said you find out what you're weak at. I I agree with you on that, but then you said like we got to survive, and so by survive you mean make your loan payments, that kind of thing. Right. And so my point is, is like okay, well, going and learning about com- more about class two composites is important. I'm not disregarding that. I'm mm-hmm. saying, but part of that experience is going to be doing them. It's going to be doing it them, doing them training. wrong. And right. I feel like that's. That's the majority of the education we have, right? And then it's going to be me learning on their technique or seeing how people do it, but then so trying to implement that. If I told you that most dentists don't pers- don't grow beyond clinically, they don't grow beyond the first year out of dental school. Yeah, that's the problem. Is, that's is well, if you don't know what you're doing, been, you're just repeating. From, you don't right. know why stuff's going wrong. You're like, you know, how many times have you heard people say, I, I'll, you know, class two composite sensitivity is such a problem. A right. lot of people, yeah, yes. like uh, looking, yeah. look, and they're looking for, you know, a magic bonding material or a magic technique or whatever. But, you know, if you don't go and and move past what you learn in school, which which was essentially in some cases very old school, very old school, sure. Then, you, how are you going to get to where you can survive? You're talking about making money. You know, I agree. You need to get out, and you just need to make money. But I think, dude, if you go out and just find a job where you're working, you're, you're going to be making some money. Now, that's a whole other podcast about finding a job. You're surviving. But let's just assume you have a job. Okay, let's assume sure. that. So you're, you're working four days a week or whatever in wherever. Well, you're doing dentistry. You have an income. Okay, let's assume you have a basic income, a basic job. It may not be the best, but it's a job. So surviving is not the question. Let's just assume that. Now, there are people that are in survival would, mode. Dude, those yeah, guys are I would different. Argue that it, I would argue that it's, it's bigger than you think. The, you mean, mean people that are certain are in survival? We consider mode. themselves in survival mode. That's well, probably a better way to put I'm it. I'm not. I, I'm not disagreeing with you that that's a huge problem. Okay, but that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, about, that's a whole other discussion. Like, well, I, get I, get, I understand that, but I'm just telling you. I think it's hard to look at it very well. But I think you have to look at it from the masses well, standpoint. But I'm saying, but it, we can't. We can't get into the discussion in this podcast of like. Why do people not have jobs? How do you find oh, a job? I understand. I understand. But, but I, we have to assume, that for the sake of just this discussion, you that you a have job. a stable so let's, job. So let's take the class two, for example. I yeah. think that's a great place to start. Okay. okay. So, so what would you suggest then for someone who graduates who needs more education on class two? Oh, dude, you go to the, the authorities. You go to a hands-on course. I'm asking you. I think that a legit oh, name one. Okay. I mean, so, so we yeah. like. So for me, yeah. it would be somebody like Ray Bertolotti. Ray Bertolotti. You know, amazing. very. Straight what is a hand course? What does a hands-on course look like? Well, Ray Bertolotti is not going to be a hands-on course. It's just going to be a lecture course about bonding, like which let's, is Im- it's so important. Yeah, every let's day. talk right, about yeah, let's talk that. about bonding. Let's talk about generation. So why can't I get that online? Well, because a lot of those courses aren't online. Okay, you know now there may be some on Dental XP, possibly. Sure. I'm not, if that's online, awesome. I'm not saying anything wrong with going to, sure. with online. I'm not necessarily debating whether you should go to these courses online, but I think. When you get to the hands-on, yeah, so is when you start getting say like endo is a better example for that well, because no, I don't think not, you can learn you can do some all hands-on of that. composite stuff. Style Italiano, and, sure, dude. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, Cor- Corky Wilhite or Jason yeah. Smithson. Jason Smithson. You know, I mean, Cheap. less than five hundred bucks, yeah, dude. Yeah, and you could spend two days in a hands-on course. We did it. Yeah, it or amazing. endo, or endo. You can go to the Hinman and for three ninety-five, you can go take a course with Steve Buchanan. On it's not now it's not it's not like one on one. But you right, can't right, do right. hands on with him. But you can do hands on on molar on extracted molars. Learn learn how to use Pro Taper. Learn how to use Wave One. Whatever you what you want to do and and get good lecture in the morning and good hands on the afternoon for three or four hundred bucks. I feel like to me that's the kind of course I I would recommend that someone if they want to go to the up their up their no, game. No, I agree. You yeah. know I think it's a good start. But if you're in survival mode, yeah, you just got to get a freaking job. Yeah, you got to get okay. a job and you got to produce widgets. And yeah, I'm sorry yeah. that there are people like that. 
Yeah. You know, what I would do is I would just focus on paying down my debt. I wouldn't buy a new car. I wouldn't buy a new house. And I would just suck it up, buttercup. You got to work. And yeah. that sucks. And you're not going to, it's going to be hard for a while. But you're going to pay those down. You just got to stick to it. Money will come. Money will come. Just do dentistry. Do it right. Learn from somebody in your local community. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know, local community. And, and just you're going to have to move on. And then once you get out of that debt mode, then be the dentist that you want to be if that's yep. what you want to do. Now, we've said enough about that. I want to move on, okay, because we got to close the show off here. We're pushing an hour. Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, so, I don't mind to keep going. Well, okay. this is good. This is a good part of it, too, is it's not flashy. Can I? Because I, I, like, I'm, y'all know me. I mean, well, you don't know me that well, but you, I think y'all know that I'm pretty kind of frank and just I try to look at things like they are, not like. And so I think part of it too is that like for a lot of us, it's just that's not um, going and taking a class two course isn't flashy. Can here's, I say that? But to me, can I say this too? Can I be honest? Reality, can I say this dude. too? Exactly. I'm trying to be honest. Thank you for being I'm honest. I'd rather be, yeah. Can I, I say this? It's not it. sexy. No, it's, it's not. not. This right here, yes. Joseph Kahn's study, it's not freaking sexy. No, no, it's not. No. The best meeting we go to every year is the Academy of Austin Integration. It, it, and, oh, are you going to LA? Oh, yeah. But what I'm trying to say, though. every every year we sit through and all we hear is 50-minute lectures from these amazing researchers, totally dry, no hands-on. how many general dentists are there? And there's yeah, and, and no and no general dentist go. Yeah, they don't go. And and but it is the reason we know stuff. Like it's the reason my it's the reason my number nine immediates look amazing. Right. And it's not because of me, it's because like I learn from these yeah. people. And, yeah. and and it's you're right though. That's the I think that's like where we're getting into actually brass tacks. It's not it's sexy. It's not sexy. I get it. It's not flat it's it not, is not cool. It's not cool. And it's part of it though is too, is it like it, it, again, I don't mind throwing my own self under the bus here. I, that's kinda how I roll. Is is part of it too is like some of we just don't we learn different like it doesn't engage us like it does. I mean, okay, clearly, so like the science, right? Learning engages styles. y'all way have you, more than it have does. You taken yeah. A, yeah. Have you taken a composite course that you enjoyed? No. Have you taken a composite course? No. Dude, I could take you to the composite course from, um, not is it James? Uh, yeah, because like my James my idea of fillings, I hate fillings, Dude. right? Yeah, I know you hate them, but I could we could take you to a course where it would be fun. Well, then you're probably right. It would be fun. You would come out of there and be like, dude, this is changing how I'm practicing, and I want to be more predictable. So yeah. why is that, and how do we change the mindset? Well, I guess here's the thing, is like, what's your goal? Because if your goal is to... Not do composites. Okay, well, well, here, well, hold on, hold on. I want to make it bigger than that. Fact. Okay? If your goal is to be a guy that all... If, if your goal right now as a dentist is, I want to do... I want to. I hate fillings. Yeah. I don't really like this. I kind of just want to like make money, own a bunch of practice, be a business person. Then there's pathway for that. Okay. And and like you're talking to the wrong guys, right? This is that's not our show. We feel like there's an absolute pathway for that. You can retire on that. You can make lots of money. I think it's a, to me personally. I think it sucks. I hate hearing people talk about. Oh well, let me tell me practice I own. And there's that. And, and like right. I know the quality of their dentistry. Sure. Horrible. 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 If you want to go, if your goal, though, True. is to be the best dentist you can be, you can still own lots of practices. 100%, I, that's all, yeah. but, but if your goal is to be the best dentist, that's, I think, where this all has to start is, well, how do you get to that? And you know what? It's not sexy. A lot of this stuff that you need, if you want to be whoever, you're, whoever your goal is to be, like I mean, a lot of young people, they love Corey Glenn, for instance, okay? Yeah. Because Corey does cool stuff. Corey knows some stuff because he went to a lot of freaking courses yeah. And he learned a lot and of guess it. Guess how much behind the scenes yeah. work he's had to like do. My, and so that's the thing is like it you yeah. have to put in the work. Justin Moody, another great people look up to Justin. Justin took Kois, he took Mish, he took all he has spent twenty five, thirty yeah, thousand dollars just look at the on successful that. People, that's, it's, so it, it's I, agree. I I don't think there's any way to get there without putting in that that boring, unsexy work. If you if you just say, well, I want to be this amazing dentist, but you're not willing to put the time to just go, man, I'm just going to suck it up, and it's hard, and it's kind of sucky, and it's not sexy. I mean, is there a way to get there? Is there a shortcut? Maybe there is that I don't know about. If there's a shortcut, like I guess that's what I'm asking you guys. And I guess guys. what I could say is that the digital well, dentistry is not the shortcut for a lot of these young <laughs> dentists getting out of school, yeah. and that's what I love to tell them. And it is not the Serac, it is not the trios, it's not. Trios and Sarah can only show you how suck your preps look. <laughs> and that's how it should do. Not for you to be like, oh, I'm going to deliver a crown one day. No. No. Who cares about it one day? Right. I want this to last at least this patient's, this is the last time this tooth is getting a crown. Right. And so that if you say that, that's amazing, but you're going to have to go learn how to do that. Exactly. Right. And, and, and what do you do that for? You have to you go. 
Yes. Because participate. And yes. I will also tell you the other side of this that we that we see and we haven't really talked about this very much on the show because it's a little it's a little controversial, but a lot of people out there who are teaching the digital dentistry, okay? Yeah. Like if you got time to work up a case on ExoCAD and do all your own exo- design, do your print, yeah, mesh mixer, get print you a printer, it, do, 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 dude, have a zirconia mill, okay, learn about alcohol like, baths. Like, dude, that. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You're not busy. Amen to that. You're no, not busy. You're not busy. How do, so, how do you make money? Like, what's you know, your deal? Like, you, I guarantee you there's yeah. money coming from somewhere. And it's not your freaking well, I agree practice. With that. Exactly. Okay. I agree so, with that. well, this so that's not awesome. reality. It's yes. not reality. sexy because that's appealing to young, young, you know, budding dentists. Yep. It's like, look at this technology. It's sweet. It's 3D. It's like putting on VR. Yeah, it's amazing. It gets old quick, though. So, but, but at the, <laughs> it gets so at old the same very time, quick. because you don't make money doing it. Because you know what people are doing right now on Facebook? That as, as you mentioned, what I posted on Facebook, there are people posting stuff, and it's funny because Corey Glenn posted it a few days ago. I like oh how I made a denture and did this and it was Super incredible. Cool. Yeah, Super cool. cool. Incredible. It's not. And there were people on there on commenting and saying, Oh, pff, yeah. shit, I did this two years ago. <laughs> two months. Yeah, and I'm of like, course, of course. Who cares? Okay, so <laughs> by the end of the day, there are anything we do is gonna be repetition and repetition. People are mm-hmm. gonna be making fun of us for oh, you bragging about you just printed a denture. Yeah. So what? If you don't understand the occlusion to make the cusp the, the way they oh, need to go saying, that so much. Do you understand what balance to occlusion If you understand the canine guidance and yeah. everything. Yes. So I'm 100% with you guys as far as the clinic dentistry and a lot of young dentists need to pay more attention instead of, because we always say, oh, there's not enough business, business classes in dental school. We don't need business classes. One thing we need is communication skills where you actually agree. understand the patient, totally. and you mentioned what the earlier. patient right. needs. And the other thing that the dentist needs right now getting out of a school is that just know that your dental school didn't teach you anything but that give you that degree and know that you need to learn so much. So that first day getting out of school is the first day of the rest of your life of learning yes. and learning. And that's what I'm doing. Right now I've had 1,200 hours since 2014 and I'm just keep killing it. And it's I'm awesome. going Love more it. and more because that money is invested into the rest of my life for yeah. future education. And, and, what it's, and then you, what starts happening after you've been doing that and you've been hit, hammering it and hammering it and hammering it, all of a sudden your cases are working. Yeah. And all of a sudden your specialists are taking notice of you mm-hmm. and they're going, wait, you went to the AO? Like yep. I didn't even go to the freaking right. AO. Right. So what did you learn at the AO? And all of a sudden, they start referring these exactly. cases to you. And you're doing this amazing. And it's not you become because an you're amazing. Yes. It's because you put in the time and you put in it's the time. It's your reputation and, you and your and work you it speaks time. for itself. Not the digital dentistry you did 10 years ago because nobody else was know how, how to do the mesh mixer or That's Exocad right. and right. didn't have the money to pay seven grand for it. So who cares? Just learn the basic analog. Mm-hmm. basics before you start attempting some of these harder cases. So by foundation, what I meant by was more learning about the occlusion. Yes. Yeah. By even yeah. that one crown dentistry, could one crown could mess up a patient's jaw. Well, occlusion doesn't matter <laughs> until it Except matters, it does. to quote yeah. Gary DeWood. Exactly. But how much of this, and I want to ask you guys about this, about because I know that we're not talking about one of the elephants in the room, which is debt, okay? Right. Because all this discussion is awesome, but there is certainly a huge component of this discussion that comes into, you know, the debt load that a lot of younger dentists are in. And I mean, what do you, what are you guys seeing having talked to a lot of people that are in those shoes? Like, what do you think the biggest challenge is? Do you think that it's a money question with a lot of this as to why people are not going to a lot of these courses? Is there just literally just a feeling under the gun from a money standpoint? The problem, it, it's not, a, it's really not a money issue, I don't think. I think the problem is, and it gets back to a little bit of this whole education thing, is that I don't think we're doing a good job in dental schools of um, educating our students that when they graduate that there's still a need for education. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, and so, okay. and so if, if they understood the value in it and the ROI in it, then it would make sense. I mean, because there's certain things that like, now, yeah, I'm not saying that you can go, because really at the, at the end of the game, at this point in the stage, there's enough free, cheap education that it's kind of hard to make money be the the big thing. That that now there are some courses. I mean, facially generated treatment plans not something you can just correct. You know, that's no, a super no, cheap no. course and to we're take, not right? That. It, but yeah. but 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 the flip side is that there's enough courses out there that what if if really I think where we're all on the same page is that there's a huge need for education. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first, first recognize that when you come out of school that you just need to start taking some courses. And, and 
recognize because that, that's ingraining in you that there's right and that listen you have to it's do that. called continuing education yes. for a reason and it's like you know um you don't you don't you signed up for a profession that requires you to continue to learn and and i i don't want to apologize for that because that's what i love about dentistry mm-hmm. i agree is that i have to continue to learn or i become a fossil and one would say well we're just doing fillings crowns, root canals, and extractions. I think, I think Todd said, John, there's only five things we can do to a tooth. If there's only five things we can do to a tooth, then shouldn't we learn how to do those five things really well and recognize that, hey, you got a good education, a good foundation, but now it's time to really dive in and learn how to do those five things really, really well. Why do you think that younger dentists are spending a lot of time taking business classes? Because this is why. I can tell you this, because it all starts from dental school and the lunch and learns. Mm. It all comes from business corporates. Yeah, it's like I said, they, they, we're telling them they don't know anything about business. I didn't so have that in So not once okay. in my okay. schooling at during a lunch and learn did I have somebody come in promote business and promote and business and corporate well not once no that wasn't a thing. that was but that was somewhat before probably dentistry got 1999 access. to 2003 I mean, right so i'm saying now i think 2010 dentistry is being attacked a lot more by a corporate america it was a pizza yeah. by a corporate dso so that's a problem okay that's so problem. what you could see the next generation coming out is like okay, so am i going to go hard and heartland work or affordable dentures i'm going to do this and this which there's nothing wrong with corporate dentistry no However, there can be so no, one I of the thing that is like we talked about what do they not know that they need is not those business classes. They need to learn about more about dentistry to make them better well, dentists more than so, oh, I need to be a better businessman so I could sell more dentistry. But yet my dentistry is so shitty. Right, right. But right. that's so not the could, point. So let me, let me say this. What my advice coming out of school was from my professors and from my mentors mm-hmm. were like, go to CE, okay, if you can afford it, go to Dawson, Panky. Every At the time, Spear wasn't even around. Go see. And it, but honestly, you know what they said? You know, said those are going to come in time. Right. But go to some of these smaller places. Like the Hinman was a big time deal yeah. for the first yeah. five years. Dude. Small meetings. Small meetings. I mean, meetings. regional meetings. You but know. You know sure. what they said? Hire a really good accountant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hire a really good lawyer. Hire a certified financial planner because what you do is a business. It's about overhead mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's about profit. And it doesn't take a, a genius a person to understand the dental business because once they understand it, they know how to help you. And let that person run your business, and then you learn your craft. And what's your craft? If your craft is working with a CFP and buying practices and taking that route and not excelling in your craft, which is what you were educated in, but becoming an MBA, that's fine. That's your that's thing. One, that's your thing. If your passion is becoming a specialist and doing that crap, that's your crap. But but I think that what we're hearing, and again, it's it's, it's I mean, I'm not, I, and don't get me wrong, like it's not like I don't like this meeting. I think it's awesome, but we're hearing a lot at this meeting from a lot of these people. I mean, we've just sat, we've just seen today. You know, uh, let me tell you about all the practices I own. Uh, here's how to be a dentist owned DSO, dude. A dentist owned DSO. So we're hearing all this stuff, and and the, it's like. It's telling, it's sending this message out there that that is the pathway to success, like that that is how you become successful. And I think that I, I'm worried that that is part of why younger dentists, because if I would have been a younger dentist, I think and that's, that's a what I was huge hearing, reason why. if I was hearing that all the time, I'd be like, well, maybe that is what I should be Dude, paying attention to. There's not one lecture that has um, one of the sponsors sitting over there in the corner that's a dental lab up there showing how to how they're stacking glass. Right, and or how why impressions suck so bad. Why impressions suck so bad. Not yeah. one, not one, and and that that really upsets us. Yeah, that upsets us, and and I think it's cool. Everybody wants to make money, but dude, like like, you're going to make money. Just hire some people to help you to make help the you money. Do it. But you're you d- made to be a dentist, yes. not a lawyer or a businessman. If you want to do MBA, go ahead and do the MBA. Sure. But then at least learn your craft. And that is so good. So you're I processing a lot. Yeah, you're I feel processing. like you're just like it's hanging just, here, man. Well, yeah, and part of it is just you, hard a little bit. Because, like, I, I agree. Okay, I, cool, I, let's, cool. Look, That's here's fine. the deal. I, I agree 100% with you. But I think part of the problem is, again, is I don't think what you're really saying, I think no one's just saying it, is that people aren't valuing what the heck they're doing. And they're not holding themselves to a high enough standard. Because really what I wow. see is uh, I would. Sully, I would, this is one of the reasons we really enjoy what you're doing. Thanks. Because 
You're like what you're doing. I what feel you like, just said right there. I feel like, said on our show. I feel like you are somebody that is cutting through a lot of the BS that's out there. Thank you. About saying, oh, it's too expensive, or it's you know, it's because of all Don't the debt, or it's because of a, sorry. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm you're thinking. And, and you're just, to get and, deep and you, just, you guys. I mean, you just said two things, man. You've said first of all, yeah. it's not sexy. It's not sexy. Right. Number one, and that you know, we just aren't holding ourselves to a high enough standard. And you know, we can all say that. I think about ourselves. Yeah. We've all you struggled wake, with yeah. that. It's not like a generational thing. No, no. And I think that's where I get irked a little bit sometimes because it like it will come across as like all oh, these millennials if they would just figure it out or do it this way. And I kind of be like, well, y'all are the you know not y'all obviously, but there's a lot of people y'all are because because the reality here is guys is you two are the outliers of your age group. Yeah, one hundred percent. So you're saying the thirty-five to forty-five year olds, or, or maybe even more, the forty-five to fifty-five. I think those yeah, are the you. ones that are on 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 coast mode. True. They're not educating themselves. They're True. not learning. They're not more. mentoring. They're either. not mentoring. They're they're so. What would about you say to things. them? Because a lot of them listen to our show. What would you say to the forty-five plus year old dentist? What are they not doing that they could help help you guys out? Well, gosh, I, we want help. What do you want? What do you? We want, want mentorship, do? man. We so you want, want you want them to come to your practice and help you? No, I want. Well, That's I, what used to happen, by the way. Because here's the thing: is that competition cool. has taken over some of this because of the business driven well, model. But but let let him answer that. Yeah. Go ahead. What what can we do? What can older? Because there's some sort of disconnect do. right here. Because yeah. what I hear I hear is a lot of times is from like because like say y'all are in the age group that can hire an associate. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I hear mm-hmm. what I hear from from y'all is. Well, there's not, I can't find the right associates, whatever. But then what I hear from the dental students is, I can't find a job. Mm. So it's like, where are we missing this disconnect on someone who's well, wanting, got, to, wanting to teach people and wanting that. to mentor? And then I don't, I don't either. Well, to I will, degree. no, so I do. I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I think I do understand. Okay. Because there's a problem. See, this is, and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just call out baby boomers. Because I think, as much as we, we want to say, oh, we call out millennials a lot, there's some truth to all generational generalities oh, of course of course but i think the truth with baby boomers we're entitled is ba- well baby boomers i think are the most entitled okay because let's just say like when you were growing up as a baby boomer college degree dude you were set for your life you had a pension a lot of times you had jobs there was were, such jobs a thing were as easy to get yeah you you know they you put in your years you get a pension and so what's happening now i think with a lot of that age group you talked about older dentists is they really didn't have to work that hard to achieve, you know, so where, and so so I think that they have a problem too, where they want an associate to yep. come in and just turn and burn, and not necessarily uh, mentor that person. They want they that look person, at it more as a as a as a as a as a tool to make more, to make money, more money for them for them because yes. of lack of pre planning to retire on the, on time. And if right. we're and talking about right, finish, that's finish, true. finish your thought payment. That's true because it's yeah no. they didn't plan. Do what? John, is that recording still going over there? Yeah, is mine going? And my, so so, and we talk about caring and talking about like valuing yeah. patients. And at some point, don't those baby boomers want to say, you know what? I want to start to transition my people, my family, my patients to somebody that's going to be able to do what I've done. Like at, at some point, um, is running my practice down and not investing in technology and things and driving it down. Where now it's a two hundred thousand dollar practice that no one wants to buy because there's the equipment's crap and. All this stuff, and so it gets bought up by a DSO. I mean, do we not think we're somewhat cultivating a problem here oh, on a been. lot of fronts? And very, it snowballed very, so very far true. down the road, it may not recover. Oh, I, th- yeah. I think you're probably right. Yeah. Unfortunately. It may but not I recover, think that they're burning it down, dude. A lot of baby boomers are just going to burn it down. They're, they're going to burn like, it down. Our we're going to take every penny out of this that we I can, hate being negative. and then we're going to basically just leave a shell But, but you know left. what? But the exciting part about all this is that what y'all are doing and what – Heyman and I want to do, and what I think what we all agree on is that we have an opportunity because of because of the access to information at this point, and because we can educate and because we can learn, we can separate ourselves apart and do something different. And and even though when the big corporate, you know, dump truck rolls in, we still have value to people because of the way we do it. Mm-hmm. And so that because you hi, you hold yourselves to a higher standard because you're using better stuff because you're providing a layer of care that they can't do. Then it, it gets harder every day on me. Like every because I have people when they come and shadow you, you get feel like oh I gotta step it up now more than like. So you, good. you get yeah, and that's good. One of the things I want to say so the accountability, accountability exactly. One of the things is also what I like to see because solely and I've witnessed his 
father being in that practice, his dad is so giving and willing to work. Gosh, yeah. And that is not what I've seen from a lot of baby boomers, mm -hmm. where they're not... Do, and I don't know if it's because father and son type of relationship, but I don't think that's the case. It's because I think the personality is, has a lot to do with it, with the older generation giving a lot of room and trusting the young folks coming out of school. However, not letting them do everything. Oh, you're on your own, but let's just send them to stuff. So one of the things that I was very blessed by, by affordable or the corporate was sending me out to courses to learn more and more and come back. And, and that's pretty and, rare. And it's very rare. Yeah, it and is. now they're learning and more in corporates or Heartland, for example, just naming one. I don't have any, any negotiation or any association <laughs> with them, but they are spending a lot more time, money investing into their um, a general dentist of going to the CE. Do you mm -hmm. say that? So also the case I, with... I, you know, I, I can't speak to that. That's just not something I know enough about right. to say, but, but that's great. I hope that's the case. When you talk about asking what do we want and, and that sort of thing... I, can I say that it's unfortunate and that we are disappointed that the this idea of what an apprenticeship looks like is gone to a degree and it that is. now I have mm. to, you know, you talk about me learning to do class twos. Well, like, frankly, I think that should be something that I'm learning from be. my senior doc. Be. I, I agree. Be. I shouldn't have to fly across the, the country room. to learn how to do more better I, class I twos. I totally right. agree with right. you. I totally agree. And that I actually, you're probably right that the mentorship of the fundamentals should happen in the private practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I mean, that would be, if you had somebody who did know the research and and was going to courses, they should be able to just, base, and that's what I do with, you know, I had an associate, and pretty much that's how I try to be. And I'm, I mean, I'm far from perfect at it, but I, you know, when cases come along, it's like, here's what I can tell you from my experience, and I try to boil down what I've gone to courses sure. and learn yeah. as best I can. Now, I don't think that's a complete replacement for going to the courses, but no, I think I totally but agree. it's a starting point. It's a starting point of passing on knowledge, mm -hmm. and that's what mentorship is supposed to be. And I think that's you're right. There's a huge lack of that, but I think it's a question of is that going to get better? And I think for Wes and I, we we, we want to believe that it can get better. Um, you know, you listen to somebody like T Bone. On one hand, I hear him saying he thinks he's going to get better. But I think in reality, he really doesn't think that. And I think that yeah. he's kind of accepted that, you know, the truth is, is that we're just going to have to accept that people's like expectations yeah. of like what their job's going to be is just now like it's just dropping and dropping and dropping to where they're just like in your shoes where you're going, well, what am I supposed to do here? I guess I just have to learn it on my own. So that's my challenge is I think that um, all of us and everyone really at this meeting, we have an opportunity to be a voice that says, well, let's not let this be a generational thing. Let's not let this be a, let's all agree and try to come together. And, and instead of like picking and attacking, yeah. mm -hmm. be open to the ideas that, hey, maybe you, I, I'm not as impressionable, so I haven't gotten my way set in something that I might have an idea that's not a bad idea. Or maybe yeah. we're stupid to not try to reinvent the wheel when I can yeah. rely on your experience. Because that's the key with millennials as well as we all know they don't want to be pinpoint, and you cannot tell them things. They're not going to be good responding to that. Reaction. Right, they don't respond to the finger pointing at them. Exactly, the because pointing. they've been finger pointing all their life. Right, right. they've been. It's not their fault. They grew you up when iPhone it this way. was you doing. You can't do it this right. way. Right, yeah. and that is not the case. But Soli does a great job of impacting and making them. Hey, we can do this. We could do this together. Yeah, let's do it. it. Not, not degrading them and bringing them down because we all know we all have flaws. Well, we one thing I would say that's a yeah. huge, like, shining thing in all this is, you know what, if you guys decide that you want to be excellent dentists, which I, I know you, I know that's what you want. Heck yeah. That I, I, and, and this is a sad, maybe, statement, but there's so much trash Yeah. that if you just try, like, a little, you be decent. You're, you're actually going to be, like, <laughs> awesome. Yes. And so, like, if you really focus on being amazing and you go to courses and you just put forth effort and you try to learn, like, it's a sad thing on one hand because there's so much trash and so it is, much it's trash. just going to get worse, I think. And do you think it's the trash because of Knoxville type of dentistry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mainly Knoxville. It's mainly Tennessee. Or Tennessee. Yeah, it's can mainly I say one thing? Can I say one thing before you wrap up? I, I say want to wrap up, but I want to go to another subject. Okay, well, let me, okay. let me say yeah, one thing. Because we were told we would be stumped. I just wanted to put that out well, there. Well, and I think, here's the thing. My, my whole goal in this is like, so like, let's just take this conversation today, this hour or so you're talking. If there's one thing that I need to be open and take too is that, you know what? Maybe you need to sell it. You need to focus on as much as you love some of the flashy stuff. Don't be so um, big of a know-it-all to say maybe you need to continue to reassess your, your, your bread-and-butter dentistry. 
You know, maybe, value. maybe it's I healthy. should say, it's healthy. It's healthy. maybe I should reassess my bonding protocol. Guess what, or John and like, I just like, talked about like that. But but see, that kind of yeah. discussion is what what we need. To, like that's what we need to it's happen, right? Because like I need to, be, I need to hear you say that, and I need to not be offended and not be like yeah. pissed off. Yeah, and and be like, you know, what? that's an area where I can improve. Yeah, and you know? I mean, it's the same with like Wes and I are not proud, not too proud to say like. Dude, if somebody has like a new protocol, a new material, we were just talking about, you know, and it's not because Kettenbach sponsoring this, but they have came out with a totally new impression chemistry. And it's actually research, like it's legit. And so like we're not too proud to say, okay, maybe it's maybe time, to time to change. To yeah, can you imagine our... switching from Ampergum to another product? Right. And I did it and John was like, Are you sure? Yeah. I was like, dude, I'm diving like, in. Or changing and, and your implant and system or changing yeah. your yeah. lab guy. I'm gonna or... give a shout out to Brad Ladena Lab Guy. Brad, glad you joined us here. He's joining us in the live stream. But Brad, whenever he said, he was like, what are you doing, dude? What is yeah. this? And I'm like, dude, I want to try it. I want you to know your opinion. Yeah. You and know? we need to be able to, to admit, just like the heart surgeon says, yeah. well, we're not using those stents anymore because yeah. there's a new something better. And I'm, and I'm okay. It doesn't mean my heart surgeries were not good two years ago. It just means I didn't know what I know now. Yeah, right. And it's mm-hmm. basics. It's just basics. Like the heart surgeon's not going to learn business, dude. He's learning about what the stent. How the he's going to he's going to sixty three different stent conferences every year. There are just, you know, for every facet of dentistry, whether it's business oriented and you're a dentist, or whether you're. But what we are concerned about, and I know you guys are too, is that the business is dominating the healthcare. It's fifty one percent business and forty nine percent healthcare. Yes, we have to make money. But the healthcare always keeps a balance because it's always in a very and if fair you, balance. Here's here's yeah, another good right? thing. You can't, you, know, give for, it away. For, you can't give it away. For younger dentists, what I tell them when we're we're sometimes having this discussion is if you go, if you find, if you talk to like a financial planner who works with dentistry, okay, like somebody who's impartial, somebody who's like an accountant mm-hmm. who who manages an impartial financial planner. Yeah, that well, stumped me there a little bit. I guess bit. what I'm yeah, I guess <laughs> what I'm mean. listening right now. There yeah, is? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Somebody who works with right a lot of dentists. Yeah. And I want you to ask them, I want you to say, Tell me the, the profile of your most wealthy dentists, okay, your most wealthy, the ones that are killing it. Yes. And I will guarantee you what they will say is that 90, probably 5% of them are just excellent clinicians. They're yep. excellent clinicians. They've gone to all the courses. This is our case in Now, point. there's 5% that, dude, they're actually horrible dentists, and they're just really good business people. Yeah, name, I, I name, I would. name Sully. Name Payray. Did I say your name right again? Payray. Yeah, yeah. Payray. Yep. Name me one... St- like studied clinician that hasn't just killed it eventually. That's not an education. <laughs> That's not an education. I mean, like, they're all they're, they're all killing it. They're all killing it. Now like, it may take them a little longer because it's delayed. Like John and I say, totally. it's delayed gratification because the route. To doing it right is delayed gratification. Yeah. It's a curve that's like looks like it's, this. It's so and bad then and like, like this, you know. And like you know, I look at that in my career. Sure. Yes, my, my financial planner always, has always looked at my lab bill and said, man, you're just out of sorts with that. <laughs> and you're just out of sorts with your CE. And I'm like, man, I'm just now trying to kind of get out of that, right. you know. And and he's like, man, you need to cut your lab down. And I'm like, man, I can't, you know, because that's delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. Because that's the Good thing. Good work. It requires a lot of money. It to does. Pay. Sometimes right. it does. Sometimes it does, you know. And, and, I, and You I'm, know what I've started doing? I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but ahead. I started charging patients a little bit more. And I tell them that. For custom shade, for example, it's called like fudge when I do, factor, man. Right. So when yeah. I say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I've already charged you this, and I don't want to change your code. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, if you want that boutique lab, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just gonna cost me another hey, three hundred bucks more. I, I'll be gold. And Nothing I was shocked at first because I thought not people like, no, right. I'll no, be you don't think they'll say yes. Everybody, Everybody is choosing wants that. The best. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing, and that's great because you're getting paid for what you do. You're not giving it away. It's fifty-one percent business. 49%. That's why a little bit I hate. I, I know all these groups. I, it's like a, sometimes I feel like it's a race to the bottom. Oh, it like, is. It's dude, like you get that, that's one of our episode titles, dude. Oh, did it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it is one well, of our episodes. I, it's like how cheap, uh, how cheap can we do this? Like these implants. It's like really. I mean, like, oh, are you, would you put, would you put that in your I, freaking exactly. mouth? Listen, that's the next subject I really like, want to talk about. Is yeah, that yeah. you? You guys have an opinion about something that we have really a problem with, and it's. The cheapskates, hmm. you know. Um, why? Yeah. So tell us. So tell us about that. Like, tell us what because you you you've talked about it a little bit before, but yeah, not. You on had our a little show. post on one forum. We won't mention yeah. what that is. <laughs> but I mean, like, tell us a little bit. About see, sometimes it. you sit back and watch, and and I just feel like I, you look at this like I, I, a lot of times it's dental implants, right? So they're they're trying to get a cheaper implant, a cheaper this. They're trying to do it, like screw ten crowns. They're trying to do it, you know, the, the cheapest way to do it. Or um, 
or just other materials, um, whether it's cements or crown. I mean, crowns is another one. I mean, how cheap can we get a lab crown now? 60 bucks, 50 bucks? Mm. I mean, it's like, and, and I'm sitting here going like, okay, at what point is it so important to my margin that I'm having to drop my crown from $100 to $70 to make money? And like, maybe my effort and time would be devoted into like being better or learning more or educating myself better to do different things or different stuff to where that it wouldn't matter. Like that's not where well, I make do what my money. Pay Ray did and say if you're going to charge, if you're going to patient. do a better crown, yeah. you're just going to put that onto the patient. Yeah. And then then the the thing that we get too, okay, is that well they're just not going to accept treatment. Well, you just saw that didn't happen. No, the just did it. They're going so tell it. me tell me some more. So so the other one the other one I see is um and you touched on it a little bit. Is, is is the lab work stuff. I mean, it's the flashy 3D printing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's trying to to look. I'm a big Sarah guy, so I don't want to go into that. But but I <laughs> we, we're not doing that conversation. Yeah, but but from don't. a but from a 3D yeah, printing side of it, the um, at some point, why are we um, we're spending all this time and effort to shortcut an area where it's like, what value of my time is that worth? And and now I, and I don't want to target specific companies or different no, things. No, we don't have to. It's but there's, but there's also some there's also softwares where it's like everything is so it's so do it yourself that now we're mixing in different companies and we're mix, mixing different versions of files and we're trying to to pull this thing together that is really cool and neat. Um, but I often wonder, okay, what what shortcomings am I doing here by doing this? I'm not getting anything. These, these things aren't necessarily made to go together, and now I'm going to use this on somebody. You know, that I've, and, and to me, there's a little bit of like, okay, am I really, is this really the best way to do it? And um, how much money am I truly saving in doing this when my time could be spent doing something else? Well, it's about time management. And, you know, I'll never forget a guy telling me that he decided to be- get his certified dental technician. He was a dentist. And he was at, he would spend time stacking porcelain. This is before Sarek. Stacking porcelain after hours. Doing all of his crowns. Yeah, they looked amazing. He even said this on stage. He had no life. Yeah. He had no life. And he's like, what was that worth? He was like, I think you can make a case with, and I think Sarek is a great example of this. There's nothing wrong with talking about that. Sarek's a great example. You can make a decent crown or you can make an amazing crown with Sarah. 100%. Yep. Do you agree with 100%, that? 100%. 100%. And, and it's a question of how much time. Take your number eight, okay, single anterior crown with Sarah. If you want to make that amazing. There's some people that do some insane stuff. It's right. What, what Scram's dad does with all that is. Exactly. And that's, and, and with anybody. So the time, I just want you to tell me, being a Sarah user, if you had a tough number eight, okay, how much time? do you think you could put into a case if you had to maybe try it in a couple times, change some things? Like, give me just an idea of, I'm talking from the time well, We're talking about multiple scan. appointments at this point now. Right, yeah. But so, from the yeah, time I mean, you scan, like hours of your actual time, if you did the whole thing yourself, how many hours do you think you could maybe put into a case like that? I, I couldn't put it in enough hours probably to make it look like... Like a great lab. Right. That's, but what would it that, take? But it, but, but okay, let's people, say three or, people, three or four hours. Three or four hours away from the or, patient? Or, the, pro- well, the problem is that I'm serious. It, it's, it literally, I think, is less about a t- time and more about like, well, it's more about the time of how much, how many I would have to do. Right. To even get that good. To do it that good where it would even be functional now, because I can't now do it if that you did, Now, if you did that case. It's okay. an art. Now, if you did that case and you posted it's it, just it it's cool, right? Ceramic. It's cool. And that's the thing. You see, so this is where the disconnect is. Is like if you did that and you did spend three or four hours behind the scenes, but all you did is you post the before and after, okay, like on Facebook, yep. you look amazing, okay? Well, it's like but, some of the 3D printing stuff. But you it's just like- produced $25 an hour. That was your production, or $50 an yeah. hour if you actually look at, with your overhead and everything. Yeah. And, and you're trying, and, and so it's, it's ridiculous. I'm not saying that you can't do it. Now, if you're a guy that's paid by a company to do R&D and to, sure. you know, work with all this stuff, dude, that's perfect for you. But if you're actually in dentistry doing, you know, needing to make some money and wanting to have a life, which we haven't even talked about, then maybe it's best to give it to an excellent lab yes. and pay them, mm-hmm. even if you're paying them a little more. A lot more money. To do an excellent yep. job. And they can do it better, more better predictably. better job. I, I told yeah. Dr. Co- uh, John Coy last week, I was at Coy Center for one of my, I'm going through the whole Good continuum. Good for you, awesome, It's amazing. Man. I'm in the middle of it. And he always says this. And even throughout meetings and just talking to him, he says, I never get paid for my anterior cases. Mm. Mm. I never. I just do it for fun. 
Mm -hmm. because the amount of time it takes to really truly bring that one single, like you're talking about eight and nine matching, which I gave up on that a while ago. I started <laughs> doing veneer on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, hey, it's I'll hard, cut man. you a deal. Let's do $500 veneer on this. Yeah. <laughs> so and I then let me idea. just, it makes me <laughs> cut down the cost. And the other crown is probably either bonded already. Yeah. or they might, so Just go ahead and do both. I get you. And it, it cuts down. But he says that I look at it as fun. I love those anteriors just because it just makes it's me feel challenge. good because I help the patient. Right. And that comes down to my practice where I notice that if any implant cases, for example, I, I cannot set my prices up high. I just tell patient, if you want to pay a little bit extra, I can mm -hmm. use New York lab or this lab or whatever lab that is going to cost a lot more, or not a lot more, but 200 bucks, 300 bucks more, that will be custom shade match right. and everything. And, and there's an aspect to it that I don't mind people doing it. Like, I mean, let's take surgical guides, for example. Okay. I think... Everyone will probably agree that they could ask the patient, "Hey, we're gonna you're gonna spend three thousand, four thousand, whatever amount you're charging for, you know, or well, it's just two thousand dollars for an implant, or I don't know what, whatever you're charging for the implant, okay? I can charge this, or and I can place the implant, or I can charge you four hundred dollars more, and I'm gonna do it completely guided to where I literally snap on something that controls my angulation depth, and I mean, that would be probably the That's easiest thing to to sell." To a, the how, patient, do guys, right? how do you guys feel about uh, guided uh, implant dentistry with you guys teaching and oh, stuff? Man. How do you guys feel about it right now? With well, it? I yeah. think that that's uh, it's it don't a great wanna, question. We, it's a great question. I don't want to get in the high weeds with it, but I think that both Wes and I feel like um, you need to learn how to do freehand implant surgery. 100% agree. Uh, because you need to feel what's going on. You need to you you can't you can't feel things with the guide. Uh, you need to first understand how to correctly get your Cutting surgical protocols down technology and, does not make you a the best implant dentist right it just makes you a better implant now dentist. when you're now when you've got where you know what you're doing and you understand how bone feels and you understand how to correctly place implants then guided then is, guided is great for yeah. certain cases in right. certain times but and i'll tell you west and i, of guided west and I don't others. west and i don't got a lot of cases and it's not because we're trying to save money, dude, because I don't mind to, to, no, to yeah, charge yeah. the patient. I, I was going more from like the the milling your own or printing your own guides yeah, yeah. versus yeah, versus paying for the time, guides, man. And the paying for the guides is like you know we, you know, I'm just gonna say the cost of me mm -hmm. sending my case and versus me planning it and printing it and all that and the time involved in that. If I spend 30 minutes planning it, and then versus somebody paying them a hundred dollars, and right. then it's a hundred dollars for the guide. That's two hundred dollars. I don't even charge. I mean, that to me is just in it's cost of doing business. It's cost, it's cost of doing business, business right. and I'm yeah, just gonna do what's right for and the And I patient. can do and I can do a couple composites in that time. Yeah, and exactly. make money. And I, well, and I enjoy doing this more. So it's well, like this. There's, there's, I mean, there's and, a, there's a, there's the a fun things, factor to it. I think too. Yeah, and if you yeah. like doing that, and that's yeah. that's what the balance to this whole thing there is. You, you know, you got fun people factor. who just love it, and they're like, dude, I'm re I want to do it. I want to do all my own guides. It's just cool, and that's great as long as you're cool with the time investment. And you you get that right. It's yeah. when you try to stand up on, on a stage and, and tell me and educate me that it's so it's like a cost savings right. thing. That I'm like, right. wait I feel like a second. I'm kind of a logistics guy about this podcast because I, we have you're to. You're keeping us on track. It's pretty good. We have to keep us on track. Although I think we're pretty off track. We've been at this talking point. a little bit about it's good, it's good. Dennis being, you know, cheaping out. Okay, whether they're trying to lower their lab bill by ten to twenty dollars or whatever it is, you know. We don't think that's the way, okay? We think we need to be providing excellence in care and don't let that drive, you know, that that doesn't need to be the driving so, force. And I want to just ask one thing just to kind of, because I know, like Wes said, we got we got to bring this thing home in a little bit. But what is, I just want to know, because we are into research and clinical, like what are you guys' biggest challenges right now that you feel like you, you want to know more about? You know, if you were going to say, hey, we want to know more about this, what do you want to know more about? Like, are you yeah. talking about clinical dentistry? Yeah, clinical, or clinical, just like clinical or research or whatever. Things, things that, you're, that you just are, are like, we don't know enough about this at this point. I would say one of the big things that is, a, is becoming a conundrum, I think, in um, our practice is, one, is how are we dealing with, um, because now with comb beam we're seeing more, right? And so how are we dealing with um, treated teeth that still have lesions, Okay. okay. That's a great question. And um, and then at what point are we evaluating um, retreating teeth versus moving into implants? Okay. That seems to be two things that I think we're so, seeing on a, a very So where do you basis. think where do you think you are right now with those two questions? So, okay. So on um, I'll tell you because I'm, I'm pretty I guess I'm pretty you know firm I guess in where I'm at right now. Um, for for the isolated teeth with lesions, it it seems to be that if it's um, 
Well, let me tell you what I'm doing and maybe what I think. So what I'm You're doing about endo treated teeth, endo right? Endo teeth have been that endo treated that still have a lesion on the tooth. That's asymptomatic. That's asymptomatic. So oh. if so, that's the big thing. So if it's asymptomatic and it's an endo a lesion on the tooth and it's isolated, I'm probably monitoring it. If what I'm thinking though, the more and more I do and the more and more surgery I do, where I'm in it and I'm seeing it, is that this is still something going on. Um, but then I think about my own self, I'm like, what would I do as far as do I, am I getting, is that Pandora's box that I'm opening? You know, are we going to, are we going to quantify this with size? Like if this is, if it's a three millimeter lesion, it's okay. But if it's a 10 millimeter, millimeter lesion, we're going to do something about it. So you want to know more about that. So that, yeah, I think that's interesting. And then the, and the flip side is there's the root canal thing. If it has a lesion and it's symptomatic and we got to make a decision on what to do, whether we retreat or implant, if it's if it's clearly a missed canal, like MB2's not, they, they, there's no MB2 that's filled, and it's a first molar, um, then I'm probably looking at retreat. If there's like a gross thing that was misdone, if not, I'm probably moving to an implant. Okay, it's good stuff. I like it, and that's topic for a future show because we've got stuff on that. Yeah. Okay. Just tune that's in. good. Um, what I'd like to know more about, or as far as research is. There are tons of implants being thrown right now at people's jaw with um, incredible amount of business classes and there's so many CEs, implant courses, implant courses, and we all know that's probably the next 10 years or five years or whatever. What I'd like to know more of doing research, taking CT scan of patients with implants and monitoring them more over time so like there is not so enough long term uh, cone beam well either cone beam or also clinical evaluation of what the so one of the things i do and i've done so much is full mouth implant dentistry yes and a lot of the things that i'm realizing from my patients and the only ones that i could say because i do have the contacts of my patients i'm making sure to call them hey come in for these con but come in for exam follow and making up sure right but these people, and you'll be amazed by knowing there are tons and tons and tons of more people, thousands of people out there with implants that are not being monitored and not being maintained. And what is going to happen? What is the lifespan? What is the survival? I'm not talking about survival rate or any research. What I want to really get out there is to be more emphasis on when you are throwing these screws and titanium on folks, it is not hard to get integration. However, what is the outcome? When is, is who is taking care of these patients? Okay, so long-term care. Care, more hygiene. How to do this? As much as I hate hygiene, sure. Right. How but, do we care or, for our implants? Or how we're gonna have to? How we're gonna? All, we're gonna have to deal with a lot of really poorly placed implants in the future. Correct. Yep. Oh, because yeah, the, the future, deal. like future, taking out implants, right. regrafting, and placing implants again. The future is of be implant big dentistry part of the is more implant dentistry. Right, so that's yeah. a good show. All yeah. right, so, well, John, let's sum it up here. This has been fantastic. Yeah. If you're a Millennial Dentist fan, um, how can they uh, find out more about the Millennial Dentist? Hey, check us out, millennialdentist.com. Um, obviously, we have a podcast we, we do weekly. We try to do. We take some months off in typical millennial fashion. Awesome. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, you can find us at on Instagram. We're pretty both active, at Dr. Peyre and at Millennial yes. Dentist. Awesome. And if you're a listener of uh, The Dental Guys, uh, you can find us over on Facebook and the Twitter at the dental guys and for west the dental guy and for john the dental guy and for honorary dental guys tonight you know yes, i love thank you very it. much yeah. for yeah, allowing us so to be on the show it's been, show. Yeah, it's been, a good it's been show. awesome i learned so much just you guys have opened my eyes in a lot of oh. different perspectives honestly it's so fun discussing with y'all yes it really is. Good. Cool. well tune in next time we are tennessee crew there you go we yes are the tennessee <laughs> dental guy crew <laughs> So you just finished listening to this uh, episode, and, and I think it was great. I mean, if you're listening to this right now, we really want to thank our sponsors um, and the Dental Crafters Network. If you're looking for a high-quality uh, laboratory that not only provides you with good, just good crown and bridge work, but really they've got a, the whole package. Mm -hmm. They've got... They've got surgical planning with implant solutions. If you're not using a high-quality implant right now, they have, they've brought Argonne Dental USA into the mix, and they're providing high-quality dental implant components, a high-quality uh, German-made dental implant, fully guided precision surgery, really good prices with all these things too, good planning services. They just got the whole package at the yeah. Dental Crafters Network. It's one solution, infinite 
possibilities, John. And I want you to give them some love. I want you to call them up and anything that you, I mean, start an account there. Send them some things. Try yeah, them just out. Try them out. See, try if, them we're, out. see, see if we're right see about it. See if we're it. right about it. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to call 1-800-8372-8370. That's it. Yeah. So listen, we really appreciate you listening. I want you to give us a shout out on Facebook, Twitter, at The Dental Guys. Listen, if you're listening to this and you've not given us an iTunes review, shame on you. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. (laughs) Come on. We need you to go right now and we need you to review us on iTunes. It does help us out. It does kind of move us up the ladder when people search for dental things, dental podcasts, that type of thing. Give us some love on Facebook, too. Give us a five-star rating there. We love that you guys are finding us and finding that you finding out what you really want to hear is what we're all about too so send us some love about that so for wes and john we are 